<laughs> good afternoon and good evening or good night wherever you are in the world. My name is Lionel Flack. <clears throat> no, it's not. It's Neil Ward. And I'm here with Brit Flicks today to talk about the film Feed Me. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Feed Me is a independent film uh, written and directed by Richard Oakes and Adam Leader. Um, I suppose you can call it a black comedy horror, I suppose. Uh, it does deal with a lot of psychological issues and it's essentially about a guy who loses his wife uh, to an eating disorder uh, and finds himself in an abyss of night tremors uh, and he's looking for redemption and looking for a way out. And then he comes across uh, a very interesting character called Lionel Flack who offers him a way out uh, and some salvation to his his dark places that he's found himself. And then he... Um, yeah, all hell breaks loose and loads of different bits and bats of entertainment and uh, comedy and yeah, real deep depression ensues and then uh, a whole lot of fun at the same time as well. All that weight you're carrying? What if I said I could take it all away? All of it. Nice meeting you, Lionel. When I first received the script from, from Richard and Adam, uh, on paper, Lionel Flack is a very uh, calculated, methodical killer. He's a very, very good at master manipulation, so he's very good at, at getting what he wants and being this sort of endearing, sort of quirky, kooky character that... Um, you sort of warm to. You find him so fascinating that how someone could have such an outrageous voice and look, uh, but also be quite forceful, but kind with his words to offer a sort of redemption or salvation to, to someone. So on the page, Lionel Flack is, uh, he's all of those things. He's, he's extremely interesting and he has so many different traits, which, um, we put together with Rich and Adam and, and talked through um, how they wanted him to appear in the, in the first sort of two thirds of the film and then how he ends up becoming at the end, which I'm not gonna spoil for anybody. Um, but he's, he's basically got his own agenda and he's also been through so much in his own life, trauma and abuse at the hands of his parents and at the, at the hands of society I suppose as well but yeah he, he's um he, he's got the most batshit crazy hairdo he's got the silliest accent um but at the end of it all and, and and deep down within the character of Lionel he's he's very disturbed and he's very troubled and he's just he's looking for his own way out of that depression I suppose and that that mental illness that he, he clearly has from the offset um so yeah, it's a it's a tough it's a tough character to portray in the way that we did with with him on on the on the screen because there's so much to him, but yeah, and there's so much of a two D caricature in, in that you're presented with, and then you start to peel back his layers and see that there's there's a hell of a lot more to him that is very dark and very um, troubled. So. Yeah, that's that's kind of Lionel Flack in a nutshell, but he's also a hell of a lot of fun to play as well because there are some crazy funny moments as well which we got to play with a lot and uh yeah, there's just there's no other character that I could mention in life that I I could compare him to, even though there's a lot of people comparing him to Ted Lasso, but we had no idea of who Ted Lasso was. I don't know if you were privy to all those tweets and people thinking it was Jason Sudeikis who was playing Lionel Flack, but it wasn't. But it was just a crazy, crazy coincidence that he sounded similar to my English voice with an American accent, so. And the moustache and the glasses, I suppose. Yeah. Well. I'm so sorry. I... Th that's fine. Oh, he'll be fine. You can clean it out in the morning for me, Jit. Take a seat. I think there's a lot of things. It, it depends what you kind of like as a, as a person. Like, he's very 
he's very quirky so he he has like funny mannerisms he 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 has a funny laugh he 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 does things that are i'd say extremely interesting so you you sort of like his persona that he's 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 putting out there to people and to jed the main character you do see a lot of of, of fun with him and when you when you laugh at something you, you instantly warm to them like even though he's killing people and, and, and has been killing people and, and, and is doing such a, a terrible act of of eating someone who is willing to be eaten. You still find yourself going, oh, he's, what's he doing that for? And then, oh, something's funny, so you laugh. So he's, yeah, there's, there's a lot to like about him. And even when you find out the dark history behind him, there's still something there that you like. I suppose he's very endearing on camera. There's a lot of charisma behind him. And then, then at points you just feel really sorry for him because you see that it's the, the bad things that he, he's doing throughout the story is through no fault of his own. But then you do realise that he's just, it's, it's evil what he's doing. It's just, it's horrible because he does have ulterior motives. And um, yeah, but there is a lot to like. It's, it's, it's a nice balance. You can like him and then you'll hate what he's doing. But I think as a character in, on the whole without tooting my own horn, I think he's very... He is very likable, and that's what uh, Rich and Adam wanted to go for with the character: is have a, is have an antagonist that can essentially be likable, like all the baddies in in films like James Bond and and other other films like that. You like and you watch the the bad guys. You like that James Bond is always James Bond. He's the he's the main character, but the the, the interest comes with people throwing the conflict that way that people throw in the curveballs and, and 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 upsetting the story and the balance so yeah yeah step two step three step three Set now? Nothing. There we go. How does that feel? I can't feel a thing. Good. You ready? The most challenging scene. Um, there was a couple, um, but I think if I narrowed it down, it's the kitchen scene, the smashing up of the kitchen scene um, with a limb. <laughs> Again, that's a spoiler, sorry. But um, yeah, I, we had one take for that. Um, so we had the kitchen set uh, and I come in in a, in, a, in a sort of rage and then you watch the rage bubble or simmer in the saucepan under, the, under Lionel's um, anger and heart break I suppose we could say heartbreak uh, and his frustrations and it, and it builds and it really really builds internally for me and we had one take to to capture it so we had <laughs> we had Richard behind the uh, the main camera we had um, Sean our camera operator in the back we're doing some some Ronin we had uh, our makeup artist Jojo she was uh, lying across the top of the work uh, worktops on the um, the cupboards squirting blood into the into the scene and we had one take and now I had to smash up a kitchen full of pots pans popcorn um my uncle's really like old gas lamp which he said please don't make sure that that one doesn't get broken and the first <laughs> the first hit of the limb smash I smashed that to pieces by accident just the one thing that I couldn't break on set which he wanted back which I'm sorry John I do apologize um I'll get it fixed um, but yeah, I had one take. So when you, when you had add in the pressure of we've only got one take of this, it's got to look good and it's got to be good. It's got to look great on camera and we can only capture it once. There's a lot of pressure. Um, so, um, Adam, Adam leader used to come to me, one of the directors and he used to give me like little things to really piss me off in a good way and like get me to the zone. I used to wander around and, and listen to one of his band's tracks. Um, which is quite emotional and quite deep. I used to sit and wander around listening to that because that could always get some form of emotion for me. Like I'm not method at all in any way, but I will use certain devices to just 
get me to a certain certain place, but I'll come straight back out of it. So I was there wandering around with this song playing and, and him, <laughs> Adam just whispering little things that would uh, annoy me in, in a good way, like imagine your ex-girlfriend and all, all your ex-girlfriends that ever hurt you or cheated on you, all those kind of things, and it would build up and build up and then, we're sat there waiting, final checks, and you, you sort of, I'm pacing around, and then, and action, and we, you just got to throw yourself in. So that was the most challenging because I went quite deep into somewhere in my own past that I could call upon, and what if someone killed my dog or things like that that like you can really harness and, and use, and then just went with it, and then yeah. Um, there's some funny bits in it. I laugh at it still when I watch it back, like slipping over in the blood and, and things like that. But that was that was tough coming out of that because I, I come out quite quickly because we had so many things to do throughout the day. Uh, and we were sort of behind and we needed to, to get through it. So that one was hard for me. And then the final final part, the final scene, there's, there's some bits there that was more emotional and the table at the end with the goldfish and, and Jed trying to work out where where Lionel goes next and there's snot dripping down and, and that was real snot that isn't any CGI that was all no stunt snot that was that was that was all real snot and I'm so glad it stayed in because it felt awful trying to you know you've got something like your nose is dripping and I, I felt it in the first scene of doing it uh, and it was just there and I couldn't do anything about it so I'm not one of those actors that will just pull myself out and go, sorry, can I get a tissue, please? I just went with it and I'm glad it stayed in because, yeah, might get me some work. <laughs> but yeah, those two scenes, the, the kitchen scene and the end scene was, was extremely tough mentally um, and because of the added pressures of just working on low budgets and, and independent films. So yeah, that was, that was hard. Uh What's this all about, officer? We are sorry to be bothering you so late, sir, but we've been anonymously alerted of calls for concern regarding a noise complaint. Well, look at me. I'm fine. No cause for concern here. Do you live alone, Mr. Flack? Sorry? Do you live alone? Uh, yes, ma'am, I do. So there's nobody else here that can account for the reported screaming? Screaming? I think the scene I'm most proud of, I think it would be that final, that final chapter of, of Lionel, where we watch his desperation just consume him. Um, we've seen earlier in the film as it, as it, as it plays out that <clears throat> he's clutching at straws and he's trying to find a way out and a way to, to carry on doing what he does, but away from the situation he's created. And there's certain elements that keep adding up to him, like with, with Alex at the, at the restaurant, what he does there sort of snaps him into this, this, this survival mode, I suppose. Um, and he's just clawing it, trying to get out. And the things he does to, to Jed in that final bit, is just playing with him like a cat with a mouse when, when a cat catches a mouse and they just play with it and torment it. That's what he's doing with Jed at the end. And then he, he realizes he's, he's backed up into a corner and it's a dead end and he can't go anywhere. And that realization for him brings out his own childhood traumas again that come to life. And then he, it's survival mode. He's trying to, to beg and plead to, can we make something of this and can it be, can it be all good in the end? Can, can I have some sort of salvation? Can I be um, forgiven for what I've done? Which you don't know if it's an, all an act to try and get out of it. Because again, he's a, he's a manipulator and he, he's, he's saying the right things to try and get out. But luckily Jed doesn't have any of it and he gets, he gets his comeuppance. But that, that, that final scene between me and uh, uh, Chris Mulvin, who plays Jed is, is sits high up in there with the the scenes that I did in the film because you see that raw emotion and I've done that in a fair few of the roles and it's usually anger and, and unhingedness but this one was that was heartfelt and it was you, you, you see from the snot and the tears and the and the the sheer look on on my face that it it means a lot more and that was a that was a piece of me projected out within Lionel which, which 
which hopefully <laughs> has come out all right. And it's, it's, it's felt when people watch the film and you see past all the kooky, crazy madness that Lionel brings to the table. And then you actually realize that underneath his, his layers is, is a really vulnerable, extremely ill, mentally ill person which I think resonates with a lot of society today in, in how people are trying to plough through life. Obviously, they're not cutting people's limbs off and they're not eating people. It might go on somewhere, I don't know. But <laughs> we all suffer with some form of trauma that we have to deal with and, and just day-to-day -day life. And I think that scene at the end shows that we're all, we're all human and we all have issues that we try and cover up. And again, nowadays in society, we're encouraged to talk about it and... Lionel Flack was essentially a guy that's never talked to anybody about any of these issues. And he's literally um, got to the, the, the point of no return where he's just gone, there's no way out. So yeah, that's, that's, my, that's the scene I'm most proud of. <clears throat> so yeah, being, being a producer on the film, as well as, uh, as one of the main characters, um, the, the producing side came about when, when Richard and Adam had... Um, had asked me to, to produce it with them because we'd um, some people had given us an opportunity to make the film for a small, very, very small budget indeed, um, which got the guys excited to write something and, and do something again since we'd done hosts. Um, and I, I gave them an opportunity there and then we, we decided that it would be a lot more beneficial and we'd have a lot more time and a lot more freedom if we, if we did it ourselves and, and found the money ourselves, which we did in the end. And um, uh, Rich and Adam had said, do you want to come and help us do this and we can, we can do the film that we want to do. <clears throat> and then with the people that I knew within the industry, I could bring them to the table and um, uh, some of the cast and, and, and crew I could bring there and, and really help. But <clears throat> the pressure of it, I, I mean, I'm sure Adam and, and Richard will say the same thing. It was extremely taxing for the month leading up to to filming and then everything afterwards the the festival side of it the 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 selling of the film uh the distribution side is 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 a hell of a lot of work um for a team of people to do let alone the three of us um luckily we we've had uh the most amazing distributors xyz in america come on board and 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 do everything stateside for us and, and they've been nothing but fantastic for us and uh, put our film on a a nice good pedestal for everybody to see which we wouldn't have we wouldn't have got if we didn't hadn't have um had their back in but as an actor trying to do all the pre-production with with adam and rich and then we we hand painted the whole of the set the whole of lionel's house it's great some people think it's a studio it's it's not it's it's an actual bungalow um it's uh nadia's uh who plays the police of one of the police officers it was her granddad's house and we were kindly given the space to use and we hand painted everything and all of that whilst trying to <laughs> create a character like Lionel Flack um, off and bring him off the page with the physicality of him and, and the, the, the different accent and the different um, mannerisms that he had that I had to create with the guidance of, of Rich and Adam and work closely with Chris Mulvin whilst doing all of that work. Um, luckily, Adam was a complete whiz with all the paperwork side and, and I, I'd call it the hard work because he was constantly just sending invoices, booking places, booking spaces. Rich was busy with, the, <clears throat> again, like the, the design side and, and, and creating all the things and making everything look dirty, horrible and, and, and dank. And whilst trying to help with the, those guys with that and create a character like Lionel Flack, which I think if I hadn't have had to do the production duties, I would have been able to have delved even deeper into him, which it's, from seeing the film, it's, it's, already, <laughs> it's already quite magnificent what he is. And then if I could have done a little bit more, I don't know if it would have had a, a negative effect or a positive effect, but when you've got two roles to be doing, and, and it's not even two roles on Feed Me, we all, me, Rich and Adam, all had about five or six different things that we'd have to be doing. I was first AD at one one day shooting as well, whilst being in scenes and doing bits. Um, you have to make things work. So in the future, if they said, do you want to come and do a, a film and produce as well? I'd probably say no. <laughs> um, 
I would prefer just to stick to the to the performance side um, because I do think there's a lot more I can give if my time isn't stretched and I'm not being pulled apart by horses. Um, but again, the experience was in, incredible. It's it's a it's a production, it's a producer credit, which I don't know how well I'll tout it out in the future. But if people want to come and, and ask and, and whatever, I, I, I'd certainly lend a hand if I could, but no, nah, I don't think I'd do it again. <laughs> because it, 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 especially at indie film level, you need to have everybody in their own department giving 100% of their talent and skill set to that department. If you think you're trying to do one job and then do another on a day-to-day -day set, then you're splitting your time into 50%, therefore you only giving 50% to this and 50% to that. Whereas if you've got a person in each department, again, money and budget restrictions, if, if you're splitting your time, you're not giving everything that you can for that one job. So I'd like to give 100% of my time to that. And I'm sure Rich and Adam would rather just direct than have to do everything again and, 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 and lose and split their time accordingly. Um, saying that, the team that we had, um, from sound department, camera department, makeup, special effects, to uh, catering, to makeup, to all of them did an incredible job and were always there with us every day from start to finish, even the days where we said we need to do another scene, we're behind. If, you, if any of you need to and want to go, then that's fine. But if you could, could you stay? And everybody was, everyone was incredible. Everyone did that and, and did those favors for us and they worked their absolute socks off and that's that's why indie film is so <clears throat> so good these days because you have people wanting to do it. We haven't got millions of studio budget, so we've got people there with passion and talent. So we worked very well with them, and and they gave us everything, and we gave them we gave them an incredible film back as well. And yeah, we're all proud. I think I'm proud even <clears throat> even though I know that there were some more things that we could have probably done looking back in hindsight. But it is. It was a magical time. It was a very hard time. It was, it was, there was a hell of a lot of pressure for us to do what we did, but the achievement and the rewards in the long run now after our um, festival uh, season and our festival tours of, like went to America and, and to Spain and we've been out in, not personally, but out in South America and all these different places that are, are looking on Feed Me with kind, kind eyes they're, they're enjoying what we've created and that's that's why we do it so but i wouldn't do it i wouldn't produce again no 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 <laughs> some cultures believe torturing the animal alive improves the taste and quality of the meat that's why today i'm gonna give you some new although you won't be able to move an inch the anesthetic properties are not so great. You are going to feel every last bit of this. A sequel with Lionel Flack. <laughs> um, I'd love to see it. Um, <clears throat> I think f from a, an actor's point of view, I don't think I'm quite finished with Lionel Flack. I think, it, I think a lot of people would like to see how and why you got to that point and the, the backstory with with the mother um for the small role that she plays in there it's an extremely pivotal <clears throat> it's an extremely pivotal piece of Lionel Flack she's like a, a jigsaw piece that's been taken out of Lionel Flack and it's why he doesn't work well anymore because it's not complete um so <clears throat> I mean I'd love to and I know the guys <clears throat> enjoy the story and enjoy the character of, of Lionel Flack so if there's a demand for it I'm sure we can we can try and do something in the future um, but I think it's for the time being, it'd be nice to, to let, let him land and then see where we are in a, in a few years time. I'd certainly love to do it. I think, uh, yeah, a prequel exploration of why he is, how he is, it would be something I'd love to delve back into and, and, and work with. Um, and equally at the end of the film, like, I don't think he's dead. I know Rich and Adam would say he's dead, but yeah. Some people have survived with, no, I don't want to support, I don't want to spoil it, but he, he, in my head he survives and there's, there's, uh, there's, there's room for him to, to go on more crazy adventures for sure. And equally at the other end, a prequel would be good to d explore why he is how he is. 
and then a sequel would be great just to <laughs> absolutely have some more fun and adventures with what he's capable of. So, yeah, I'd love to, <laughs> definitely. So if you live in America at the moment, it's been out since the 27th of October. Uh, it's available on all good platforms, all of the, uh, your Amazons, your iTunes, so it's available to buy out there. I, I'm not sure of the dates at the moment, but I think it should be coming to DVD in America soon. I think it's in January sometime. I think there's a link on Amazon that you can buy there. Um, and in the UK, uh, we're still in talks with, with, with certain companies over here to release it. Uh, we are hoping for early next year. I don't know when this is coming out. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> early, maybe mid, mid next year, if, if everything goes all right. Um, but yeah, that should be the usual places again. And then after that, should go to some sort of streaming platform later on down the line. But yeah, <clears throat> if you're in America, go check it out. <laughs> We had an idea of a road trip thing where he, he escapes from uh, um, <clears throat> the prison, uh, well, from, from jail, um, and he escapes as Lionel as you see him at the end. And then me and Rich were talking about <laughs> how he would turn, turn back up in a whole totally different disguise um, just to get back to the police station to get the um, evidence box with his glasses and his wig. <laughs> so he turns up as this like lawyer like with like uh, the guy who we um who's who's uh, xyz we kind of wanted to do a character very much like him because he's such an amazing person and has, he's got such a strong look we we're gonna get me to do that and go into this police station and be like oh hello there sir or or, or, or do like a totally different accent and go i'm here for, uh, to represent blah 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 and he goes in and he's he's like breaking someone out of prison but he's just breaking out this box with his wig and his, his glasses and then the next minute you see him in a in a in a soft top car just speeding down like on a road in america with like the wig on and the glasses and then he keeps seeing his mum in the rear view mirror doing this whole like just going off and just doing some madness but yeah i don't think that that, that could like a thelma and louise but then he, he goes and gets jed from the <laughs> intensive care or gets him from the hospital and breaks him out and takes him in a backpack everywhere, <laughs> it could work, but, but yeah, let's do a little pitch thing. Ah, okay, so, um, wow, Lionel Flack um, doing a pitch for a sequel. Okay, uh, hi everybody, uh, my name is Lionel Flack and I would like you to give me five to $15 million for me to make a sequel to my movie, Feed Me. It'll be Feed Me, the Lionel Flack story. If you could do that, that'd be really great because there's so much more for me to give to you. Thank you and good night.